Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Levi. I am a software engineering major in college and I pretty much make videos about software engineering or building project. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing. And today we're going to be talking about one of my most recent builds, which is a dieting slash calorie counting app I built a couple years back. But I'm currently revisiting it because after my previous video, a good amount of you guys got interested in the application. So I decided to make a video talking about the app. And I know this is not the kind of videos I typically make. I'm um, just currently trying something new to see if you guys are going to be interested in me talking about my personal project in a little bit more detail. So since this is the first video I'm going to be making about this app, today we're going to be talking about why I am building a calorie counting app or a dieting app in the first place and two, what the app does and what does it do differently from other apps that already exist in the markets because there's a good amount of apps that already exist that kind of does the same thing. But I feel like mine is different in a couple ways. We're also going to be talking about the tech stack and libraries I used to develop this app. Then we're going to be talking about the challenges I faced while I was developing this app because I actually faced a lot of challenges developing this. And lastly, we're going to be talking about what's left to build in this app because this app is far from complete. And we're also going to be talking about how you guys can come along and help me test out this app before I release it to the public. So why did I build a fitness or a calorie counting application? First off, I want to say I am not trying to compete with any of these fitness or calorie counting applications that already exist on the market like MyFitnessPal. This is just a personal project. That being said, my first big reason was of course to develop my skills or to improve my skills as a software developer. This was one of the first ever full stack mobile apps I've ever built and I, I definitely learned a lot from this experience. And also I genuinely needed a dieting application because I needed a way to keep track of my food, my macros, the calories and all those other little things that we overlook in the foods we eat every day but contribute to weight gain. I needed an app that could help me track all that. The second reason is the cost of already existing apps. We've all heard about MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal costs about $80 a year and about $19 a month and in my opinion it is highly overpriced. I wanted to build something that functioned like MyFitnessPal while keeping it free but cost free and free of ads. I built this app two years ago and I've been using it ever since and it cost me $0 to build and $0 to use. I'm not using any pay service, everything I'm using for this app is free and it's open source, you have access to it. I'll talk about that more when we talk about the tech stack I used to develop this app. The last reason I'm building this dieting application is because of complexity and lack of certain important features from apps that already exist in the market. Take for example MyFitnessPal. This app can be very complicated and daunting to use sometimes. It serves several purposes like counting calories, exercising, food recipes and stuff like that. There's just a lot going on, which is actually good. It's nice that they have a variety of features inside of the app. But there's a lot of people out there like me whose main goal is either to eat right or lose weight and just want an app specifically for them to keep track of their calories, macros, and also keep track of their weight. That's why I went ahead to build this app. I just wanted an app that when I open, I can see a quick glance of what I've eaten so far and how much I have left to eat. And also be able to go ahead and log my food by either scanning my food or manually searching for it. Those are kind of my big three reasons for me to develop an app like this. And I feel like those three reasons are valid enough for me to actually go ahead and build something like this. So let's go over some of the screens of the app and what the app actually does and how it works. Once the user opens the app, they either sign up or sign in. And once the authentication is complete, um, you kind of have this screen that shows you everything you need to see at a glance. So now we're just going to go from top to bottom. So up here, we kind of have this simple app header that shows the user's profile picture. It greets the user, tells them what time of day it is, and of course shows them the date. So moving down, we have the section here I like to call the food entry. This is where users can search for the food they're trying to eat or also use the barcode feature to scan the food they're trying to eat. I'm going to come back to this section when we talk about the food search process. And moving down, we have what I call the progress circle. And the main idea behind this progress circle when I was developing this app was to give a user a visual representation of how much they've eaten so far towards their goal. So when you sign up onto the application, you have a calorie goal. That's how much you're supposed to eat in a day. And the whole idea behind this progress circle is to give you a visual representation of how many calories you've eaten towards your goal. Inside the circle, you have how many calories you've eaten and what your goal for the day is. And also when you load the application, I added this really cool load up 
animation for the circle and also this count up animation for the text so that way it counts up towards how much you've eaten so far and moving down we have the macros display and the whole point of the macros display is to pretty much show the user how much of each macro they've eaten towards their goal for the day i mean right now the user can only track the three most common macros you find in food which is protein carbs and fat um, in the future i'm definitely going to increase the amount of macros the users can keep track of and also let the user choose what kind of macros they want to track because for some people they might not really care much about the fats but are concerned about their sugars so in the future there will definitely be an update where the user can select what macros of a food they want to keep track of so moving down the next component is the meals breakdown component and the main idea behind this component was to show the user how much of their calories or macros went to which meal of the day and of course there are three different meals there's breakfast there's lunch there's dinner and this pretty much tells the user how much of their calories went to their breakfast, how much went to their lunch and dinner, and same thing for the macros as well. But when I was designing this specific component, what I had in mind was a feature where the user can see if they're, you know, eating their breakfast or if they're skipping breakfast or, you know, eating more breakfast and skipping lunch. It's just a way for the user to gauge what time of the day they eat most of their meals which will also help them with intermittent fasting, which is also a feature of this app we're going to be talking about. And scrolling down to the last component on this page, which is meal history. This is kind of self-explanatory because it just shows the user a history of everything they've eaten today. The whole point of this homepage is to show you as much information you need to know without you having to click into nested pages. But if you want, you can also click into some of these components to see more information about the meals you've eaten. So for example, in the meal breakfast component, you can click each specific meal like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it takes you to a page that tells you what food you ate for that meal. And it also tells you all the calorie information and all the macros information about everything you ate for breakfast. And for the meal history, you can also click into the specific meal and it gives you same thing more information about the meal you ate and down here there is a note so so when the user is logging a meal we give them the opportunity to add notes to their meals this is just an opportunity for them to pretty much dump whatever they want to dump about a specific meal because when they come back at the end of the week to review everything they ate the notes can be a means of them to you know kind of remember some specific things about you know how the food made them feel or how they prepared the food or the recipe for the food so it's basically a brain dump opportunity for them to just dump whatever they want about a specific meal they're eating for the day. Now let's move on to the next feature which I would say is kind of the backbone of this whole application which is the food search feature. When the user clicks the food entry box or the what are you eating prompt right it takes them to a page where they can search for the food they're eating. So let's say for today I ate apples for example. I can search apples and down here one really cool thing I did was I added a suggestion a text suggestion feature so that way when the user starts searching for a food, the app kind of suggests the food for them before they can even complete typing out the word. It doesn't just suggest random text, it suggests texts that are related to food. So it suggests foods instead of text. So let's say for today I ate chicken breast. So I can type in chicken and it already recommends chicken breast. So once I click chicken breast, it gives me a result of all the possible chicken breasts that exist. So top here we have the regular chicken breast, we have skinless chicken breast, and there's also different brands of the food you search. So you can get the Tyson food um, brand, you can get the Crackland brand, and just basically it gives you a list of all the foods from different brands that exist based on what you search. For example, let's say you're eating mac and cheese, right? The mac and cheese from brand A might have different macros information and calorie information than the mac and cheese from brand B. So the whole point of this search result is to give you the result of the food you searched and also give you a list of all the brands that offer the specific food you searched so that way you can select a specific brand to get the most accurate calorie information and macros information. So let's say for this example, I searched chicken breast and let's say it was just a generic chicken breast, something you can pick up from Walmart or Aldi's for example. Then you have this screen that gives you the details about the food you selected. So it tells you it's chicken breast, it doesn't have any brand, it tells you the seven size is 100, 100 grams and the calories per seven is 195 calories per 100 grams. Then going down, this is where you select how much serving you ate. So let's say for example, for some reason I ate two 100 grams of protein, which is gonna be two servings. And down here, you select what meal it is. It can either be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Let's say this is for breakfast. And down here is what I was talking about earlier. It's basically an opportunity for the user to add notes or comments about 
the food it can be literally anything this is literally just a brain dump and when the user locks the meal it takes them to the home page and as you can see it updates the home page with the information of the meal they just logged all right guys real quick for some reason i completely forgot to talk about the barcode scanning feature of this application but the whole point is if the users don't want to manually search for the food they're trying to eat they can also use the barcode feature and just scan the barcode of the food they're trying to eat and it's going to pull the calorie information and the micros information just like it would if they manually search for it. This is specifically handy for people who are always on the go. Let's say you stopped at the gas station and you picked up some snacks to eat. You can easily click the barcode scan feature, scan the barcode of the snack and it's going to pull all the calorie and macros information of that snack so you don't have to manually search for it. That's just all I wanted to talk about. Back to the video. So the second page is a feature I just recently completed, which is intermittent fasting. So in the app, you can also fast. So you can set the ratio of your fasting preference. So you can either uh, fast a 16 by eight or a 24 by eight. So you basically fast for 16 hours and you have an eight hour window to eat. So this is the fasting screen. And as you can see, I am currently fasting. We also have this progress circle that we have in the home page, but this time it keeps track of how long you fasted. Um, that's the elapsed time. This keeps track of how long you fasted and how much you have left. Blue is of course how much you fasted and the gray part is how much time you have left to fast and down here you also have the fasting history um this is still something in progress i'm trying to figure out a way to show the user the history of their fasting and how long they fasted for but that's kind of everything about the fasting page uh, we also have the discover page which is currently blank it's still something um brainstorming what kind of content to put on the discover page then the last tab is the profile tab and this is pretty much the user profile we have the user's profile picture their name their username there's also the app settings which is currently blank i'm still working on the settings page then there is the health and fitness page which is where the user can update all their health and fitness information so in the future there's going to be an update where the user is going to be able to lock their weight every single day so that way you can Kind of keep track of your weight gain or your weight loss and it kind of keeps track on how far you are till you meet your goal weight so that's kind of all the screens that are in the app right now and that's everything the app does right now but now let's talk about the tech stack i used to develop this application this app was mainly built with react native and php the ui and the functionality of the app was built with react native and pretty much the backend and the interaction with the third-party api services and the database was built with PHP. I used two different sets of API services to pull the information about the food and all the macros information. The main reason I'm using two separate API services is because the main API service doesn't really have much context about a food and I'm talking in regards to the macros information. It doesn't have every single macro information about a food so that's kind of where the second API comes in. The job of the second API is to mainly supply the macros information about a specific food. I'm using the Fat Secrets API and the Nutritionics API. They're both free and they both actually have paid plans but for the data i need for my app the free plan works just fine now let's talk about the challenges i faced developing some of the features of this application because there, there were several challenges i would say the most significant one was the ui trying to keep the ui clean and minimal as possible while also showing the user as much information about their you know calorie intake as possible if you know me you would know that i'm not very good with design i'm the kind of person that i prefer you give me a design and i just build it out but unfortunately in this case i had no designer i had no ui designer to design the UI for me, I had to do it myself. I was basically getting UI inspirations from different apps. For example, I got the UI inspiration for this progress circle from an app called Zero. And that's just how I came up with every single piece of UI for this application. It was just me copying different pieces from you know different apps and putting it all together to make sense. The second challenge I faced building this application was state management. There is a lot of state management going on in this application that you guys don't see. For example, when the user adds or deletes a meal, we of course obtain Updates that in the database but we also need to update the global state so that action reflects on other components where that data is being used that's why when you log your meal and you come back to the home page you see that you logged a meal it's getting that data from the global state if the app didn't implement a state management you would have to come back to the home page and manually refresh the application to see your changes unfortunately that's not good user experience and that's also a necessary api cost to the server which in turn can increase the cost of running this application so what's left to build 
code. Like I mentioned earlier, this application is far from complete. There is still a lot of features I'm going to be adding into this application. For example, the next feature I'm going to be working on is a feature that lets the user create a meal inside of the application instead of logging every single ingredient or every single food item that contributes to a meal. Because if you think about it, most people who count their calories oftentimes meal prep. So let's say for example, this person meal preps a chicken, rice, and veggies bowl. Instead of them to go into the app and you know log the meal for the rice, log the meal for the chicken, log the meal for the veggies, they don't have to do all that. This feature is going to let them create a custom meal, which is going to be their chicken, um, rice, and veggies bowl. When they're creating this custom meal, the app is going to ask them every single food item or ingredients that contributes to this meal. And once they put in all that information and put in how much of each food item they're using for this meal, so that way the app is going to come up with a general calorie information and general macro information for that user's custom meal. So that way when the user is logging a meal, they will just search up the custom meal they made and log that meal. And also one feature I would like to add is a feature that tracks the user's water intake. Now the user can log water, but there is no way for the app to keep track of how much water the user has consumed in a day or in a week. That's something I'm going to be working on in the future too. I would also love to expand the food data set of this application because right now you're limited to only food that exists in the US. So for example, if there is this Italian dish or this African dish or this Middle Eastern dish you're trying to log, you won't be able to find that on the app. We are currently limited to food in the US. I'm currently brainstorming ways we could expand the data set which will mean me including multiple APIs so that way we can, if possible, cover every single country in the world or at least a good percentage of countries. But unfortunately right now we're still limited to the US. And honestly, I can sit here and yap about all the features I would love this app to have, but those three I mentioned are kind of my top priority right now. So what's next? I'm going to be releasing this application to a small amount of users in the US. And when I mean small, I'm talking about 10 to 25 users who will use this app daily and give me feedback. I'm I'm going to leave a link in the description to a waitlist so if you are in the US and you would like to help me test out this application and give me feedback or if you think this is an application you would like to try out when it's released definitely sign up on the waitlist. Again, I've left the link in the description. Go ahead and sign up. It will actually mean a lot to me if you guys sign up. But yeah, that's kind of where the app is right now. I'm going to be making follow-up videos in the future when I add more features to the application. So if you guys are interested in seeing follow-up videos when I add new features to this application, definitely subscribe. But thank you guys for watching. And if you're watched to this point, thank you more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.